What up, Dodgers Nation? D-Mac here. It's a special day because I'm joined by the Dodgers' number one prospect, Mr. Diego Cartaya. Diego, thanks for rocking with us today, my man. Thank you, guys. Hey, man, we're so happy to have you here. We're going to get into some baseball talk in a second. We're going to start things off with a rapid round, rapid fire questions. I'm calling it Rapid Fuego with Diego. You ready to rock? Let's go. Okay, well, who was your favorite player growing up? Miguel Cabrera. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. What's your favorite game? Uh, I will say the show. And it'll be the show. All right. Yeah. The favorite American food restaurant? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. I know you said Chipotle. You went to Cheesecake Day, but Chick-fil-A, hey, man, love it. Favorite sport other than baseball? Soccer. Soccer. Who's your team? I like Barcelona. Barca. I love it. Favorite TV show? Um, the Office. I like yeah. The Office. Yes. Who's your favorite musical artist? Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. Hey, the All-Star Game, I don't know who got bigger cheers. It was either you or Bad Bunny. It was no, pretty bad, close. Bad Bunny for sure. It was pretty close. <laughs> I love it. Uh, favorite player to watch in the league that isn't a Dodger? I like to see Trey Turner. Like, he's fast. Trey Turner got those slides. Yeah. He's fast. Okay, so you're stuck on a deserted island with one of your teammates. Who would it be? Miguel, for sure. Miguel. Guess, yeah. You guys have a good time. Okay, what is going to be your big league walk-up song? I don't know yet, but I want to play something like who represents, you know, where I'm from. Probably some Latin song from Venezuela. I don't know. That's awesome. Okay, last one here on the wrap it around. Most famous person in your phone? I would say Gradero. Bruce Dar, the yeah. bazooka. All right, there you go. Hey, he's a famous guy, man. Big time, triple digit heat. Okay, so now we're getting into some baseball talk here. First of all, how's your offseason been? And what's the coolest thing you've done this offseason? Uh, it's been good. Um, I think just being around my family, it's been fun. My mom, my, my dad, and my girlfriend, they're all fun. So everything that we do together, it's very fun. Yeah, and I want to ask you a little bit about just growing up in Venezuela, playing as a kid. What was that time like for you? Well, it was it was great. You know, like I started playing when I was three years old and I got to play with the Venezuelan team a lot. So traveling around, go to another country and play. It was fun. Yeah. And I read somewhere that your mom, she was the physical trainer at your baseball academy. She was a professional bodybuilder. Yeah. And I just want to know the impact she had on you growing up. Did she make you eat healthy? Did she make you stay in shape? What kind of impact did your mom have on you growing Man. up? A lot, a lot. She she helped me like she still helped me a lot. Um, she always told me what to eat, what I can't, what I cannot eat, and she's always like on me with that, like training, always helping me. So that it's I'm blessed that I have her. That's great. She's like, hey, you can't go to Chick Fil A, right? Yeah. Stop going yeah, to Chick Fil A, Diego. That's what she said all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, look, we talk about baseball in Venezuela. It's a religion, and I want to know about just the what, what it's like, the whole culture of baseball in Venezuela. Well, I don't know how to explain it, but you know, as a Latin, we gotta play like we're fun, we're loud. We just have to um, represent that, you know. So I don't know what, like, what can I say about it, but it just. We just, we're loud. We have fun. We like the, how we call it, the perreo, you know, like bad yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that. So I think that that affects the game. Yeah. And I was just going to ask you about that because I was at the game where you had the grand slam and the at Rancho. And the first thing that stood out to me was one, the sound of the ball off the bat. And then two, how far that thing went. I'm pretty sure it's still out in orbit. It hasn't landed <laughs> yet. Was that your welcome to professional baseball moment? Was that the moment that really was the most special moment of your career so far? Yeah, for, for sure. It's one of my highlights. Uh, I think it was my first uh, Grand Slam in uh, pro baseball, so it was special. And obviously, like, for a walk-off, so I, it's something that I would never forget. Yeah, and you talk about that that bad flip. I mean, it was epic. And you play with that energy. You play with that yeah. fire. Where does that come from? And do you think that the next generation of players like yourself are going to bring that? Yeah, for sure. I, I just feel like the game is more fun playing that way. You know, like being respectful to another team or the pitcher, but I just feel like it's more fun. So we got to keep doing that. Yeah, yeah. What's the key to a good bat flip? Well, just try to be natural. Like, just don't think about it. Just throw the bat and whatever it goes, like, that's a good bat flip. <laughs> yeah, because you go from that and you go, <laughs> exactly. Just got to be natural. I mean, you saw you're hitting home runs out of the stadium. I saw a game where they actually changed the score of the game while you're still rounding the bases. That's how, how hard you hit that one. But yeah, I was going to ask you just about growing up and becoming a catcher. What made you want to be a catcher? Were there anyone that you emulated as a kid? What really inspired you to play that position? So when I started playing baseball, I always played third. Like, I played third growing up my whole life. And about uh, two years before I signed, I started catching. 
just because I'm not fast enough to play in infield. And I always wanted to catch because, you know, like as a kid, when you wear the year and all that, it just looks cool, you know? So I, I, I wanted that and uh, I always like Salvador Perez. So that's why I wanted to catch too. But um, I don't know why, like I never caught before. I, I was just, I grew up playing third. Yeah, and you talk about Salvador Perez. I've heard you compared to him. The first name that popped into my head when I saw you swing the bat was my favorite player growing up in Mike Piazza. And he, like you, was another big catcher. You're six three. He was six four. Have you watched any highlights of Mike Piazza? Have you took any inspiration from him? I have. I have watched some uh, highlights. I never saw him play. Like I was too little, but oh, probably not born yet. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, for sure, I've seen like a lot of homers that he hit. He hit the ball hard. <laughs> Yeah, he hit the ball very hard. I want to talk to you about the Dodgers' current catchers. I mean, talk about Will Smith. He's the guy who probably will make the all-star team this season. You have Austin Barnes, probably the yeah. best backup catcher in the yeah. league. What have you learned from them just watching from afar? Have they given you any advice as a young catcher? Well, I haven't, like, talked with them a lot, you know, because uh, we haven't, like, I haven't been, like, in the spring, uh, big league spin training or, like, I haven't been around them a lot. But uh, for sure, like watching the games, like when we uh, go and watch videos about like framing or how to call a game, for sure, like the, we, we watch their videos. But they're great guys. Like you can tell the way that they they help you with something. So it's good. Yeah, and you talk about this renowned Dodgers farm system, one of the best in Major League Baseball. Just talk about what makes this farm system so special and how they've been able to help you reach your potential. Well. You see, like, all the, the minor league players, like, the prospect and all that, they're, they're all good. Like, I'm impressed that I'm the number one. Like, I don't feel like I, I am. Like, I see guys like Bobby, Miguel, James. Like, they're all good. And even guys that they're not in the list, like, I feel like that list just tells you that you're still a minor league player. So I, I feel like it doesn't matter if you are in the list or not. But just being a Dodger player, like, that means a lot. Yeah, and you talk about the tradition of being a catcher. This is basically a catcher factory at, with the Dodgers, with Campanella to Socia to Piazza. The list goes on and on. How special is that to you to not only just be a catcher, but to be a catcher in this Dodgers organization? Well, they always they always say that being a Dodger catcher is different. And I think that just like you said, the tradition and all that, and you just keep learning about them a lot. But um, it just, it's very special being a Dodger catcher. Yeah, and we talk about the minor league level and the coaching down there. I want to ask you which coach has had the biggest impact and what's a lesson maybe they've taught you? Uh, I would say all of them. Like, they always try to help you. And each, each um, I would say, like, if you want to learn how to run, you have a coach and they, like, uh, try to be the best or catching or hitting, like, they all help a lot. And I would feel bad if I bring up a name and, you know, forget others. But I feel like everybody... It's very good. Yeah, I know. They're all elite at what they do. And then we talked earlier about the MLB Futures game. You had you, you had Bobby, you had Miguel Vargas. Yeah. I mean, talk about that experience and just the emotion of playing at Dodger Stadium in that game. Man, it was so fun. Like uh, like I said, like I didn't notice that I was going to play until it happened. You know, like I was excited to play uh, around a lot of good players. I played with Bobby, with Miggy. And it was such a good experience. Like, I was so excited, and I, I, I'm happy that I played there. Yeah, I know. It was it was such a great weekend. Like I said, when I was at, I was telling my friend, I was like, hey, I don't know who got bigger cheers, Bad Bunny or Diego Cartaya, because <laughs> Dodger fans will love you in that game. And I want to ask you about Bobby Miller. You've caught Bobby Miller. Yeah. You're the number one prospect. He's the number one pitching prospect in the organization. We we'll talked about his talent, and do you think he can be a future star for this organization? Oh, for sure. Like, I'm so glad that I have to face him. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I face him in, in the spin training, but I'm happy that. I don't, I don't have to face him playing on another team. He's so good. His stuff is very good. He's a great guy. You know, the same with me. Like, they're both really good. Yeah, and then also, yeah, Miguel Vargas. He's another guy that he's going to get a great opportunity this season. Do you think he's going to grow into being a star for L.A.? Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah, Miggy does it. Yeah. That hit tool is ridiculous. And also want to ask you about one more player in Gavin Stone. Gavin Stone, he's had a meteoric rise through the minor league system. Yeah. Talk about his pitch repertoire, what it's like to catch him. Well, we played together last year in Rancho, and he deserved it. Like, he, played, like, he, he works hard. He's very smart, and... Uh, that's a guy with a lot of talent. Like I said, like I'm happy I don't have to face him either. But um, he's great. He's gonna do very good. Is that the best changeup you've ever seen? 
Well, I would say him and Pepio. They, Ooh, yeah. they both have pretty good changeup. Those are it's, it's, a, it's hard to hit it and it's hard to catch it. Hard to hit and hard to catch it. Yeah, no, elite elite movement on those changeups is ridiculous. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to ask you also about some of these players that are currently in the league with this Dodgers team and what it would be like to play in this organization. You're not far away. You're really getting close. At some point, you're going to get that opportunity. What's that going to be like to make your Major League Baseball debut? Man, definitely like a, a dream come true. You know, like that's my dream. Since I start playing baseball, I just want to play in the big leagues. And if it when a team like the Dodgers is very exciting. Yeah, and I just wanted to bring up a picture of you from, from back in the day because you stepped onto the scene, the number one international prospect back in 2018. Oh. What goes through your mind when you see this picture? It feels like it was a long time ago. But um, I remember that day. That was one of probably one of the best days of my life. Uh, I was just, I was 16 years old. Look at look at look at those braces. <laughs> that brace killing with the braces. You got the tie on. Wow. Hey, you're killing the game. What would 21 year old Diego Cartaya tell 16 year old Diego Cartaya? Man, just keep working hard. Just work hard. Yeah, don't, come. yeah. Keep working hard. I want to talk about that work ethic because a lot of people talk about your work ethic and how how great it is. They talk about your baseball IQ. Where do you think that work ethic comes from? Uh, I would say my mom and my dad. Like uh, they didn't play like any professional sport but i saw them like growing up how they were with their jobs and all that and that's something that you you learn like growing up yeah and in this picture of course you were the number one international signing you're the number one prospect for the dodgers you're the number eighth prospect in all of major league baseball what is it like to deal with those expectations how do you manage the pressure of being the top prospect I don't feel any pressure at all. I just keep playing, having fun. Like I said, uh, I feel like I think that being a prospect just means that you're still a minor league player, and that's not my goal. That's not one. That's not the uh, any of those guys' goal. So just gotta keep playing, and when you become a whole famer, that's where you can feel that pressure or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, we we'll talk a little bit about this uh, 2023 season that you have this year and kind of the improvements that you're focusing on. When you talk about defensively as a catcher, is there anything that you're focusing more on this season that the coaches have been kind of working on? Uh, yeah, my blocking, I, I want to get better at it and definitely keep working with the pitchers, like know how to um, use true media and game planning and all the stuff. It, like it's a lot of info. You have to know how to how to use it. And I would say that and the defense basically like blocking and framing. Yeah. And what's the biggest challenge going from from low A to high and just kind of going up through the ranks as a catcher defensively? What has been the biggest challenge? Uh, I feel I think like it's easier. I don't know why, because I, I feel like guys in high A, they throw hard, but they throw everything like closer to yeah. the strike zone you know what i mean like when you play in, in lower levels like pleasures are more wild so i i just think it gets easier in that side but like saying like calling games and all that gets a little bit harder oh man, because you, you got more guys in the line now that can do damage i wait till you see kershaw's command one day you're gonna love it oh but yeah no don't you wait. talk about uh so making those improvements behind the plate and how about offensively we know you have that prodigious power that swing you hit the ball hard you lift the ball what are you focusing on at the plate this season um i want to have quality at bats i want to strike out less just put the ball in play you know uh i don't have like numbers in mind i just want to go there and have a good at bat every time i go to the play yeah and then just kind of circling back to what you were talking about catching different pitchers watch some minor league games and sometimes you've heard about it's pretty much well documented that sometimes the dodgers of course they want to win these games but also they want to develop these pitchers and sometimes you talk about the repertoire and the pitches they're throwing sometimes you want the pitchers to be working on that slider is that a little bit of a challenge knowing that hey maybe this is not the pitch they'd be throwing in this count in this situation because yeah. we're trying to develop those secondary pitches yeah yeah that, that's a great point it actually happens a lot like you know that it's not the right pitch but like for his development or what the team wants like you have to call it but i think like everybody's so good that even when it's not the right pitch you can get away with it yeah exactly right i mean they have filthy stuff right yeah, they can yeah. get out and get swing and miss with any pitch but uh yeah i was asking you too about some other positions because we know you're a catcher you're an elite catching prospect but we saw you getting some work in at first base you anticipate getting any more work in at first base this season well like like i said i used to play third and i don't mind playing all their position i just i want to be in the lineup 
and that's all it matter for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Best position in the batter's box. Right. Yeah. 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 And then I was going to ask you too about for this upcoming season, what are your, any specific goals that you have other than just wanting to strike out less as far as just you developing as a player? I just want to stay healthy. I, that's my main goal. I want to stay healthy. I know like uh, being healthy, I can do a lot and it's just confidence on me. Yeah, and you were banged up a little bit in the 2021 season at the hamstring. And then, yeah, what is the key to you staying healthy, you think? Um, well, I start eating better. Uh, I keep, keep on on my exercise stretches and then all that recovery after the game. And that's a, that, I think that's a big thing. Finish up with this one. So finish this uh, sentence, finish the blanket. The 2023 season will be a successful season for Diego Cartaya if? If he stays healthy. If he stays healthy, you heard that. Diego Cartaya, the number one prospect in the Dodgers organization. We thank you so much for joining us here oh, at you. Dodgers Nation, man. Learned so much. We appreciate the insight. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram. We're going to drop his handle down below. But thanks a lot. As always, Mr. Diego Cartaya. Thank you, man. Thank fun. you so much. 